Hi, and welcome to the video series for Pray Fully. I'm Michelle Fanley. And I'm Emily Jaminette. Today we're going to be discussing Chapter 6, Prayer Protections, Devotions Draw Us Deeper Into Prayer. And we'll be interviewing Father Stosh Daly, the pastor of Holy Family Church in Columbus, Ohio, and also the spiritual director of the Sacred Heart Enthronement Ministry. I'm really excited about this chapter and really hearing from Father Stosh as he is a wealth of so much information regarding spiritual protection, devotions, and many of the topics that we wrote about um, and shared about in the book. So we'll go ahead and begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather here today. Please bless our time together as we seek to become women of prayer. Please help us deepen and develop our personal relationship with you. Give us the graces we need to grow closer to you. St. Gemma Galgani, pray for us. St. Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. St. Gianna Bredamola, pray for us. St. Zelie Martin, pray for us. St. Edith Stein, pray for us. St. Margaret Mary Alico, pray for us. I'm really excited about this particular chapter on spiritual protection and the importance of devotions in our life. I'm, um, you know, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque is really, um, she's called the Apostle of the Sacred Heart. She's a gift to women and men in this time and really reminds us of the importance of the most sacred heart of Jesus. So I'm excited that we get to talk to Father Stosh, who's really a not only leader in this um, devotion, but nationally known for his tremendous love for the Sacred Heart and what he's done with growing closer to the Lord and bringing his whole parish there along and greater community. Here we are, we're on site at a Holy Family Parish. I'm here with Father Stosh Daly and really uh, not only the pastor of Holy Family Parish, but also heavily involved in promoting the Sacred Heart devotion. So as we're here, I just really look forward to um, not only introducing you to a friend of mine and really a spiritual leader, but also an opportunity for us to take a deeper look at devotions and their role in the lives of Catholics. Thank you, Emily. It's always a good to join you on these efforts to spread the faith and uh, to delve deeper into our uh, Catholic experience of the Lord. So, Father, tell us briefly on how, you know, devotions lead us closer to the heart of Christ. Devotions are a response that we can offer the Lord. Uh, and the devotion itself is a response that we offer directly to the Lord or to His Mother, Our Lady, or the angels and saints. The devotions are primarily a response from our heart to the Lord, something He's invited us to respond to. Uh, devotion can be something like lighting a candle. It can be praying a novena. Uh, even making an act of consecration. So the devotion is first and foremost really good for the human soul uh, to be understood as a response to the Lord's invitation to move out of ourselves and to have a, a greater grasp on His love for us in the here and now. And what have you seen in the light of your priestly vocation, how devotions have strengthened those you know, that are practicing them and what, you know, I, I mentioned enthronement, I mentioned a number of different devotions. What have you seen in your, your journey? I mean, personally speaking, you, we can use an example like the Holy Eucharist. We learn from the faith, we learn from scripture, the tradition that Jesus is present in the Eucharist. But how do we build that uh, fire of love? Through the devotion we have to the Eucharist. It, the devotion is taking the knowledge we receive from the church and then building on it as a response. So every time you visit Jesus in the tabernacle and you genuflect, you entrust yourself to his burning heart there in the tabernacle. That's an act of devotion. Likewise with the Sacred Heart, we know that Christ has a heart that burns with love for us. But when you have an image of that heart in your home, the devotion of having that image there is first expressed in having the image present. And then every time you see that heart of Jesus uh, depicted there in your home, it's a powerful reminder the fact, the knowledge, the truth that his heart burns with love is the foundation. My devotion to that heart of having the heart depicted in the home is an act of devotion. Seeing the image of the heart and how it affects what I think, what I say, how I love, how I pray, how I give everything of who I am and everything of all of those who are around me to him, that's the devotion. So devotion takes the knowledge, the facts and the truth 
and then brings it into like a, a greater degree of how we live. The devotion is how we live. It builds upon the, the facts and the knowledge and the truth. Um, so with regard to like the Sacred Heart enthronement, the Sacred Heart enthronement builds upon the devotion we are called to have as Catholic Christians to the Sacred Heart itself. Jesus appears to the visitation nun, now Saint Margaret Mary, uh, in Père Limonial, France, and he reveals the truth that his heart beats and burns with love for humanity. That's the fact, that's the knowledge, that's the truth. Margaret Mary's response is a devotion. So Jesus letting us know that his heart beats with love for us, that's truth. How do we respond to that truth? That's where our devotion kicks in. So if you wanna have a devotion to the Sacred Heart, you have the image in your home. If you wanna have a devotion to the Sacred Heart, you wanna have a response to the truth that his heart burns with love for us. And that has an impact on how we pray the Mass. It has an impact on how we make our confession. It has an impact on how we all of a sudden acknowledge the first Friday of the month. It has an impact on acknowledging the fact that Jesus doesn't want to just dwell in our home. He wants to be the king, brother, and friend, which is where the enthronement then kicks in. And enthronement is like taking the devotion, which is built upon truth, and making that devotion present in every aspect, every dimension, every corner of our life. Wow, that is really helpful. Um, you know, one of the things with our book, um, Prayfully, we're really encouraging women to take those steps towards deepening their prayer life. You know, is there any words you have for someone who's really struggling with prayer or struggling with, um, you know, the seeing their, their value in the midst of their busyness or where they're at? Absolutely. Great question. And something that's applicable to an ever-growing number of people today. I think, you know, the first thing I remind people, whether it's in the confessional or after Mass or before Mass or walking around the street dressed like this, you know, people will come in and say, Father, I need help. And I always remind them first, remember you were made by God and you were made for God. So the Lord made you for himself. So don't ever think that everything in this life is on your shoulders or on your heart. Uh, remember you were made by God, you were made for God. And make use of that truth and have a devotion to the Lord. Love the Lord. Move out of yourself in prayer. Move out of yourself in study. Move out of yourself and read something that's going to nourish the soul, uh, which sometimes can be a rich garden or a dry de desert. You know? <laughs> nourish that soul by reading something that'll help you know the Lord made you and the Lord wants you. Well, that's so helpful. We're so blessed to be able to be here with Father Stosh daily in Columbus, Ohio, outside <laughs> on this warm day. And um, I hope that your session is truly inspiring.